welcome. I'm Andy Dolph from BinauralJourneys.com, and I'm actually here in my mother's office, my, her home office. I'm here with my cats, and we're house-sitting for them, uh, my parents, while they're out of town. Um, and it's sort of interesting to be doing this in what's now her office, but was the room that I grew up in. Um, and it feels so good to be here and just to be here in the world. This video is about what I think is the best step that any of us can take right now to feel better and have more of all of the amazing juicy stuff that we want in our lives. This is something that we can make really hard, like many things, but it doesn't have to be. It can be really easy. A few notes first, though. If you don't like to watch videos, you don't have to. Below this video on the website is a link for just the audio, which you can download and put on your iPod to listen to in the car, which is what I would probably do. If you prefer to read, there's a link to an ebook with a full transcription of what I'm saying, with clickable links and everything, if you prefer that. But if you don't mind washing, stick with me. It won't take too long. Warning, these ideas can be hazardous to your worldview. In fact, that's the whole point. I want to start to open your mind to a new way of experiencing yourself in your life. For many of us, it's very different from anything we've experienced in the past. And that's not always comfortable. But I'd like to encourage you to try it on gently and see how it feels. Then make up your own mind about what's right for you. As you can probably tell from the title, this is all about clearing. But what do I mean by clearing in this context? To me, it's a process of coming into alignment with who we really are. Our true self, divine self, inner being, whatever you want to call that part of you deep inside, which is the most true, the most real, the most you. So there's a logical question here. If this is our true self, how is it possible for us not to be in alignment with it? And in some ways, that's a very big question. And my answer here may not be fully satisfying. But let me give it a shot. Lots of things can get in the way of our expression of who we really are. These are things like programming that we learn as small children about how the world works. Almost always, this programming has more to do with the beliefs and the programming of our parents and teachers and society at large than it has to do with reality if there is such a thing. So we pick up beliefs, habits, programs, deep-seated ideas, which are not expressions of who we are, but rather are rules that we believe we have to obey in order to get along in the world. Some of this information is actually important and useful, but the problem is we've learned it from the perspective of a very small child and without consciously deciding which of these ideas are really important and which may not be important for us. So we end up with this map, this way of looking at the world that we've created through all of the experiences of our lives. The problem is that the map isn't clean and organized. It's a hodgepodge of ideas that we've picked up and ingrained in ourselves along the way. As we clear, we give our inner being and our adult minds the space to look at all of these ideas, beliefs, and patterns that we've picked up along the way and to rewrite them in the way that's the most useful and the most true to who we really are. This sounds hard but it doesn't have to be. It can be a very gentle, easy, organic experience of allowing ourselves to move more into alignment with who we are. 
It can even feel really good. As we engage in this clearing, we start to feel better mentally, spiritually, even physically sometimes. It becomes easier and easier to truly feel what we feel. And this is something I've found to be utterly transformational in the best possible way. It also helps us to open to the flow. This alignment with the universe, the divine, God, or whatever you want to call it, that divine flow that we all want to be in and be in alignment with, because it can carry us so wonderfully in our experience. The more we get clear, the more we're also able to tune into our natural ability to allow things to be easy. Now, stop here for a moment and notice if any feelings came up with this idea. Our natural ability to allow things to be easy. How do you feel about the idea that you have a natural ability for things to be easy? Many of us have lots of programming around this. Programming that says things like, easy things aren't worth doing, or life isn't easy, or hard work is a virtue, or lots of other possible things. And we treat them as if they are true. But my experience and the experience of lots of other people who have done this kind of work in different ways, is that when we're able to clear these beliefs, things somehow become easy. It can feel like magic. And in my way of thinking, it is magic. It's the magic of allowing ourselves to know what our inner beings know about how the world can work if we are open to the possibility. Clearing old beliefs is the way to get there. So I hope you're starting to get a sense of why I think that clearing is a key to progress, to living the kind of lives we want to live, and to becoming more and more who we really are. So, of course, the question becomes, how do we do this clearing? And there are at least as many ways of doing this as there are people. I'll share some suggestions as starting points. One good place to start is by paying attention to your body, really noticing how you feel physically in the moment. What I found most effective is to do this without trying to understand or interpret or change what it is that I'm feeling, to really allow myself to not attach meanings to feelings, but just to feel. And as you do that, you may find yourself spontaneously coming to a point of clarity about what something means. And that can be incredibly powerful. The key is not to try to think your way to meaning. This is about giving your, yourself permission to feel however you feel and to be in your body feeling what you're feeling. Another place some people find very powerful to start with is peacemaking. And in particular, with the work of Howard Wills. He was given a set of prayers in a powerful mystical experience many years ago. And he gives the prayers away for free on his website at howardwills.com. Another website I really like is The Fluent Self, the blog of Javi Brooks at fluentself.com. Much of what she calls destuckification is a practice I would call clearing, or what I would call a clearing practice. And she has a really unusual and wonderfully playful and powerful set of ideas about how to do this. One of the oldest ways of clearing is meditation. It can range from Zen practice, which I find very difficult and therefore tend not to do, 
whether I think I should or not, to many forms of guided meditation, to the kinds of body awareness practices I talked about just a little bit ago. More on this later. Many, many kinds of healing modalities can also be useful for clearing. And I want to share something which was a key realization about this for me. My experience has been that how effective these kinds of healing work sessions are has more to do with the practitioner that I'm working with than the modality itself. If this is something you want to explore, my recommendation is to find the healer, counselor, massage therapist, practitioner, witch, or whatever that you connect with that feels like the right person for you to work with right now. And that's something that can change over time, too. I'm much more focused on who they are as people and how being with them feels than the method or technique or toolkit that they use. If the connection feels right, the work is very likely to be powerful. There are three techniques for clearing that I particularly like, and I want to really spend some time talking about and sharing my experiences with each of them. I also don't want to overload you, and I think we've really come a long way already if you think about it. So we'll talk about them in the next video. If you found about about if you found out about this video through an email you got from me, you'll get another email in a few days with a link to the next one. If you didn't find out about this from my email or you just can't wait to keep going, you'll find the next video on my website binauraljourneys.com under clearing. Before we finish, Let's just take a minute to look back over where we've come in the last few minutes. And then we'll finish up with a couple of simple ideas that you can try right now. Key ideas. Clearing is important because it's a way of releasing patterns and beliefs that get in your way of being who you are and living the way you want to live. Clearing will enhance your life. I can't tell you exactly how or exactly when, but it can be very dramatic and sometimes very fast. Clearing doesn't have to be hard. It can be easy and gentle. So as I said, let me leave you with a few thoughts of ways that you can start clearing right now. They're easy and gentle but can still be extremely powerful. First is what I call the love meditation. It couldn't be simpler. Get comfortable, put on some music if you like, and simply repeat the words, I love you, over and over again as a mantra. You can think of it as saying these words to the universe or to God or to no one in particular. I do recommend that you don't try to force yourself to think of them as being focused on yourself. Not because self-love isn't good, but because doing that can make this a lot more intense than it needs to be. And that will make it less helpful and harder to do. It just is something that can push buttons for a lot of us. Another thing you can do is the peacemaking prayers from Howard Wills that I talked about earlier. You can do them once a day or even several times a day. And I know a number of people who find that they are a really wonderful and also powerful practice. One of my favorite things to do is to just concentrate on things that feel good. Really enjoying the enjoyable things that happen in your life and acknowledging them and appreciating them even when you're having a hard day. I bet if you look, you'll find some things you can appreciate. And paying attention to that, you can train yourself to pay attention to things that feel good and notice them and, and bask in them. And then you'll feel good more of the time, which is great. 
the last thing I want to suggest is a little more unusual, but it's something I found to be very powerful and it's very easy to do. If you're experiencing a problem or a difficulty or feeling stuck in some way, try a dream assignment. This is something I learned from my friend Erica Rock, who I'll be telling you much more about in the future. She's amazing, and the work she does is amazing. But this is just one little technique that's made a big difference for me. Before you go to bed, speak to the divine in whatever form you're comfortable with, and turn over to the divine whatever the problem or difficulty you're having is. I'll give you an example. The form in which I address the divine is the being peace. So I'll say something like, peace, I love you. I surrender and give to you this whatever it is. I give it to you to solve while I sleep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You don't have to use my formula. In fact, I, I never do it exactly the same way twice, but you're welcome to use or adapt this in any way that's helpful. Sometimes the results of dream assignments are immediate. Once I did a dream assignment for something I was having trouble figuring out, really struggling with, and before I even laid down to go to sleep, the perfect solution popped into my head immediately and clearly with the force of a clue by four. It was pure grace. Thank you, peace. So the results can be immediate. Other times you may find that the next day that something shifted, sometimes it takes longer than that, and that's okay. The divine, in whatever form you want to address it, knows the perfect timing to make everything work out for you. One last thought about this. Don't necessarily take the words dream assignment literally. Sometimes you may find that you get a response or an answer in a dream. For some people, I think this happens pretty often. For me, it's very rare. It's much more common for me to find that things are just different in some important way, or the perfect solution shows up seemingly on its own. However it works is perfect. I'd like to suggest that you choose one of these four ideas I've suggested. The love meditation, the peacemaking prayers, paying attention to things that feel good, or dream assignments. Just give it a try a few times and see what happens. And we'll talk about some other more specific tools in the next video. Until then, this is Andy Dolph signing off. Enjoy the journey. And by the way, you can always email me, andy at andydolph.com. I'd love to hear from you. And I'd love to hear if you have questions about this or things that really hit home for you or when you have an amazing experience that comes from something uh, that I said here. I'd love to hear about it. So either just hit reply to any of my emails or drop me a line, andy at andydolph.com. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the journey.